I'm Dr. Zaida Chaudhry, and I have with me Jim. I'm a behavioral health therapist at Seclair. And I have Omer. I'm a student at Seton Hill University, and I study psychology. And I have Dr. Ruth and Valentine. And I'm a psychotherapist, and I specialize in holistic health care. And we have Mike and the rest of the students here. So today's topic, which we are going to discuss, is joint disorders and the focus on arthritis. So there are many joint disorders, actually, if you see it's a broad list. We have back pain, we have copper tunnel syndrome, we have fibromyalgia, gonococcal, which is infectious, we have gout, we have uh, polymyalgia, rheumatica, Lyme disease, osteoarthritis, name it, many of them. Many of these arthritis are due to strain and injuries, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis is different, which is due to autoimmune disorder. Now, if you see arthritis is very common disability in the United States, and uh, which is limiting the activities of nearly 21 million adults. And a new study from CDC reports that 52.5 million US adults have arthritis. Um, and limitation of the activity, actually, in many of them. Almost 43.2 percent people have limitation of the activity with these um, pains of arthritis. Then comes what causes arthritis. There are main causes actually of the arthritis. Injury or aging uh, is the leading cause of arthritis. Metabolic abnormalities such as gout and pseudo gout. Um, there are genetic factors and infection play a big role in arthritis. Autoimmune disorder uh, like. Um, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is called SLE, which involves many other organ systems in the body. Um, so instead of a single disease, um, the arthritis is actually an umbrella term used for a group of more than 100 diseases. So what ex exactly arthritis is, is the inflammation of one or more of your joints. And the main symptoms of the arthritis is pain and stiffness. And one of the two common uh, arthritis the two common ones are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, osteoarthritis is very prevalent in older age group, and it is one of the common presentation among old age people coming to the doctor's offices. So to understand a little bit about arthritis, I think it is important to understand how a joint works. And if you see this slide, um, basically a joint is where one bone moves on another bone. Ligaments hold the two bones together, and the ligaments are like elastic bands. While they keep the bones in place, your muscle relax or contract to make the joint move. And the cartilage covers the bone surface to stop the two bones from rubbing directly against each other. And the covering of the cartilage allows the joint to work smoothly and painlessly. And with that said, knowing a little bit about this, uh, we'll see what happens in osteoarthritis. And before we move on to that, um, broad classification of the arthritis, uh, we have degenerative arthritis and osteoarthritis fall into that category. Autoimmune, as I said, rheumatoid arthritis, infectious bacterial viral infection can give you arthritis, metabolic endocrine, crystalline arthritis, gouty, pseudogout, neoplastic, which is due to cancers because when you have metastases to your bones, they can give you severe pain. That can be actually very much like arthritic pain. So um, I'll focus on osteoarthritis. Uh, and Dr. Chowdhury, quite a few of my patients, particularly those in uh, the middle years and above, come to me and tell me that they are experiencing osteoarthritis. Perhaps you could explain that just a little more, more to us. Right, 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 sure. So as I said, it is um, a degenerative disease, and uh, pathology lies in the cartilage mostly. And it is uh, joints only. There are no systemic features. So it does not involve actually any systemic or internal organ system like I was talking about rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus. So it is limited to the bones. Uh, it affects millions of people, not only in the United States, but millions around the world. While osteoarthritis can damage any joint in the body, this osteoarthritis commonly affects your hands, neck, back, knees, and hips, and gradually worsen over time. And as we say that no cure exists, 
but certainly if we make lifestyle changes, uh, we can really uh, decrease uh, the symptoms of osteoarthritis. If you see on this uh, slide, which is normal and osteoarthritic bones, there is a joint, knee joint. There is a capsule in the norm, on the normal side. You see the cartilage, and you need to see the synovium, and you see the bone. And see the side where there is osteoarthritis. There is a capsule which is thickened. There is there are cyst formation and sclerosis in these bones, and you have uh, synovial uh, hypertrophy, and the contour of the bone is altered. So these are the changes you see uh, when you see the X-rays of the osteoarthritis uh, patient. And then there is another slide which I would like to share is osteoarthritic knee slide. If you see how the eroding of the cartilage is taking place, this is a bone exposed bone, and then bone spurs are forming, and meniscus. You know. The knee, most of the, most of the time you heard the word meniscus, there's eroding of the meniscus um, in uh, osteoarthritic knee. So what are some symptoms and physical findings, uh, Amir, in uh, arthritis patient, osteoarthritic patients? Uh, some of the symptoms would be pain early in the disease, uh, end the stage pain at the rest, may have little or no pain and some stiffness. They have some stiffness in the physical findings. It will be the uh, bony enlargement that involves the hands, the knees, the hip, the feet, and the spine. Good. Very good. Yeah, so pain is the main uh, symptoms of the patient. And then uh, bony erosions, actually. And you have uh, the hands. Uh, affected like metacarpal and carpal, all of these joints are affected. So this is a slide for the osteoarthritis of the hands. If you see here, you have a hand involvement, bony enlargement, but sparing of metacarpal phalangeal joints. And then you have a proximal interphalangeal joints, and you have some nodes on distal inter interphalangeal joints, like synovitis, inflammation of the synovium. There is another slide which is very interesting here is osteoarthritis of spine. If you see this x-ray of the osteoarthritis of spine, the scoliosis, because if you have that issue, the curvature of the spine is not right. So the patient can have very early osteoarthritis. In this case, you see the disc space narrowing you see with these arrows, and you have bridging osteophytes, which are uh, actually cells of the bones, and there is sclerosis. So with that said, um, comes to the point that uh, because osteoarthritis uh, patients go through so many changes because of the pain regarding their mood, regarding the activities, so how we deal with the osteoarthritic patient it should be holistic assessment, holistic approach, and management is, in my opinion, truly needed. Healthcare professionals should assess the effect of osteoarthritis on the individual's function, quality of life, occupation, mood, relationship, and leisure activities. And what would be if I was working with a, a patient that was experiencing the distress and discomfort and unable to perform some life tasks because of arthritis, what, what would be some goals we would look for, Dr. Chowdhury? Sure. The goals for the osteoarthritic patient, right, Amir, should preserve the quality of the life. That's very important by reducing disability and how we can do that. And then reducing pain and inflammation, prevent the cartilage degeneration, and utilize conservative therapies for the long-term management because if you give pain pills after pain pills, that's not the way the arthritis patient uh, uh, will uh, benefit. Although they benefit for short term that you can have pain and then uh, you can relieve the pain, but it's not the long-term therapy. So conservative therapies and uh, so that you can decrease the non steroidal and uh, medications, uh, pain medications, 
and prevent the need for the invasive therapies like uh, joint replacement therapies. So the treating osteoarthritis, again, like I said, is a holistic approach. The first important thing is you have to see the weight of the patient. So the weight loss, how you can approach your patient um, for the ideal weight. And muscle strengthening exercises, physical therapies, you know, very important assistive devices like walking with the cans, walkers, will prevent your injuries and fall. Pain medication are always, uh, for mild cases, you can give acetaminophen, non-steroidal um, anti-inflammatory drugs. And there is another thing, actually, which is very commonly people are taking uh, glucosamine, chondritin sulfate. Uh, and patients have actually shown, uh, and a lot of patients are taking this, and how much it is effective. I'm really not sure how much it is effective, but it is, uh, according to many patients, very effective. Joint injections. Joint injections can be steroid injections, and there is another now viscous supplements, high molecular weight, high uranic acid. Now, this, these are injections, actually. What this do is that you inject this in your uh, knee joint. It's not even proven yet for the uh, hip joint. So you inject this in the knee joint. What it's doing is making a cushion, and it prevents uh, the collision of two bones. And, and the two bones uh, are not gliding and sliding on each other, giving more pain to the patient. So um, it is pretty effective. Then you have surgeries. You have joint replacements. And uh, self-management, education, and physical activity programs for uh, reducing pain, actually, it's, it's very important uh, and improves the quality of uh, life in these patients. And um, according to the Center of Disease Control, actually, they have some physical activity. If you're spending two and a half hours a week at least, and physical activity means moderate to intense physical activity, you can really decrease the risk of many diseases. And uh, what are those diseases, Omar? Do you know how the physical activity can decrease the risk of uh, these uh, patients? Well, some what of are them, those diseases? Some of them will be uh, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, uh, breast cancer, uh, weight gain, be depression. And the other one could be early death. Very good, yeah. And it is through the center of disease control that there is a great health benefit of this, even a small amount of physical activity. But the important thing is the patient needs to know what is the boundary and what is the limitation. So every physical activity may not be effective for every patient. So individualized physical activity should be um, actually, um, the patient should be educated. Uh, one important, uh, Dr. Valentine, uh, factor which I have uh, noticed and then I, uh, I, I saw the new release CDC report mm -hmm. that many patients with these kind of conditions going through chronic pains have in depression and anxiety. Yes. So dealing with the depression and anxiety for these patients is very important uh, because pain has a marked effect on the mood. And sometimes patients otherwise are fine. They don't have any mood disorders. They don't have any anxiety, depression. Medical condition can put them into depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, I think uh, I talked enough. And uh, now, Dr. Valentine, when, what do you think when I say that the patient with chronic pains like osteoarthritis pain, yes. can get into depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. and do you think there are other ways where we can address these things? Like, you are a holistic practitioner. What yes. advice would you give or what suggestion you have? Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Chandra, you did a, a, a tremendous job in giving it a broad view, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, of um, uh, uh, arthritic conditions and bringing it down to the osteoarthritis. Uh, Dr. Shadi, whenever I work with individuals who are struggling with pain, for whatever reason, but we're focusing on osteoarthritis, 
uh, I can, uh, and I certainly do the evaluation as you have described. And I, I consider what I'm going to say in terms of uh, how that pain is affecting their body, their mind, and their spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and I do agree with you that oftentimes the person is suffering from depression as well as anxiety because they're losing a quality of life they used to have. Right. Yeah. And they can't move as fast. And and so what I do in helping them to accept where they are in their life, and that's the first step, is there is a mindfulness acceptance uh, and not one of despair, uh, one of hope, based on hope, and that's on, on the side of spirit. And, and so I do uh, teach mindfulness meditation. And mindfulness meditation is uh, helping the person uh, be with themselves and ultimately bring their body into a relaxed state. Because in pain, uh, we oftentimes stiffen, even, you know, and we help our joints who are stiffening. And if we're mm -hmm. afraid of that pain, then we're going to stiffen all the more. And so the mindfulness meditation, I really believe, is very, very important in helping the person towards acceptance and helping their mood in, in response to their to their pain. Right, right, right. Would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. You're very good said and well said. Thank you. And there is a last slide, which uh, maybe next time we will talk sometime about rheumatoid arthritis also. So there is a last, I don't have it. Do you have the slide? OK. The last slide here is normal and arthritic joints, but it is normal joint, osteoarthritis, and rheumatoid arthritis. And you see that there is some difference in that. In osteoarthritis, you have bone ends rubbed together, and there is a thin cartilage. But in rheumatoid arthritis, completely a bone erosion, actually. It is very destructive arthritis. It is swollen, inflamed synovial membrane. So there is a lot of inflammation going on in this condition. So, so this is very important, actually, the rheumatoid arthritis also. But I'm not going to talk about this at this point, maybe in future. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week.